the safety paradigm of a high temperature gas cool reactor is different from a conventional light water reactor and hence there is a need of a separate study for safety domain of high temperature gas cool reactors. Hi, I am Ankit Mishra and I shall be presenting on very high temperature gas cool reactors commonly known as HTGR or VHTRs. Let's talk about some of the design features. The characteristic difference between any other nuclear generating technology and HTGRs is the use of coated fuel particles. This supports high temperature typically in the range of 750 to 1200 degrees centigrade. Helium is used as coolant and graphite as a moderator. According to International Atomic Energy Agency, any reactor with output of less than 300 megawatt electrical is known as small reactor and if the reactor are made on an assembly line and can be transported to the site using rails, roads, etc., then they are also known as modular, hence small and modular. The typical power density is 3 to 6 watts per cubic centimeters as compared to 60 to 100 for a conventional light water reactor. HTGRs come two basic designs, prismatic block type and pebble bed type. Let's have a look at the price of particles. The diameter is roughly 0.92 millimeters, which is one tenth of a centimeter. The innermost layer is fuel particle made either of either out of uranium dioxide or uranium oxycarbide. Then it has a buffer low density material which has enough room to absorb fission products. It is followed by another layer of high density silicon carbide layer. The outer layers provide robustness and structural integrity to the coated fuel particle. All the outer layers but the fuel kernel are made out of isotropic pyrocarbon and has different densities as illustrated in the picture. In prismatic block fuel, the, the chryso particles are embedded into fuel compacts which has 26 mm and 10 mm as inner and outer diameter respectively and a height of about 39 mm. These are put together to make fuel rods. These fuel rods are put into a graphite tube in the graphite fuel block. Graphite blocks stacked one over another make up fuel column. A typical fuel block is seen in the image and gives an idea of the relative dimension. Fuel blocks are designed in such a way that heat can be removed from the block efficiently. For this, some of the guide tubes are reserved for coolant flow. Pebble bed type HTGR fuel. Here again, the same triso coated fuel particle is put into graphite dough and then hard pressed into balls. It is then surrounded by a 5 mm thick graphite layer. The diameter of the resulting fuel ball is 60 mm or 6 cm, roughly equal to a billiard ball. If we look closely at the pebble bed vessel, it is elongated typically to support natural convection with lower diameter to assist a radial conduction. The fuel pellets are dropped inside the vessel from the top and removed from the bottom of the vessel. Again, the brief, again after brief inspection of the fuel integrity, these fuels can be re reloaded. The design allows for the support of online refueling. This online refueling is typical of CANDU PHWR, where fuel assembly in cylindrical calendria is irradiated and shuffled both axially and radially. This helps in increasing the burn up. For heat transfer, cold helium at 60 megapascal, which is roughly equal to 60 atm at STP, is fed from the top and hot helium is collected from the bottom of the vessel. This hot coolant goes to the reactor generator. Let's talk about the benefits of HTGR technology. Since we have higher outlet temperature of 700 to 1200 degrees centigrade, the efficiency of electricity generation increases. This also competes in full market of electricity and process heat. As an example, we can use process heat or process steam of uh, for petrochemical industry and also hydrogen production. This is known as cogeneration. The system also features significant improvement in safety and thus allows less stringent 
preparedness or emergency preparedness decay heat removal can be done by natural means as there is no possibility of core meltdown radioactivity is contained within the coated particles relaxation in emergency preparedness zone which can now be at the site boundary the system can achieve a higher burn up of about 80 to 200 gigawatt days per ton of heavy metal there is flexibility in the fuel cycle and this can burn plutonium very efficiently let's talk about the challenges as already mentioned it has lower power density and hence this implies that the reactor vessel would be large typically it is of the order of 2 to 3 times that of a normal lwr reactor vessel there is also a limit due to the forging capacity of bigger reactor vessels helium coolant has low density and hence requires high pressurization this gives rise to the need of a reactor pressure vessel instead of a reactor vessel this adds to the capital cost coated fuel particles costs are expected to be higher and hence this also adds to the cost of the fuel during operations let's now talk about the safety paradigm of this type of reactor employing triso coated fuel particle as the first line of defense in did we want to retain the radionuclides inside the coated fuel particles we would like to control the heat generation remove the heat from the core and control chemical attack we rely on the functional containment of the fission products and fission product gases uranium dioxide and uranium oxycarbide kernel is surrounded by carbon buffer which is porous and hence absorbs what comes out of the fuel kernel then there are three other carbon layers to give stability and enhance the integrity of the particle then we also have prismatic and and billiard balls to contain the the fission products which escape the inner layers in this slide we also see a graph between fuel failure fraction and the fuel temperature which has been found empirically by experimentation and also uh, combining it with analytical models it is very obvious that while the normal operating uh, range does not exceed 1200 degree centigrade there is no fuel failure change chances till 1600 degree centigrade this is the limit or the maximum design basis event temperature beyond this there is a slight increase of fuel failure probability capped at 10% till 2300 degree centigrade before taking nearly vertical flight at 24 degree cent 2400 degree centigrade let's talk about the reactor cavity cooling system the picture on the right describes the mode of heat transfer within the within the core Uh, the primary mode is conduction from the vessel to the rccs cooling uh, panels it is radiation and free convection in the reactor cavity we also see a spot where the cold outside air comes down uh, under gravity after heating up uh, naturally rises and 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 thereby creating suction in the system this system operates even during normal operation of stgr and results in loss of about 1% of heat the inherent safety feature is associated with the system with this system is a product of higher negative temperature coefficient of reactivity lower power density and moderator properties let us now look at the loss of flow accident simulation exercise we see three things first under depressurization condition the maximum temperature reached is about 1680 degree centigrade with a mean of about 1600 degree centigrade second the timings it takes is about 40 to 50 hours to reach this maximum value third due to negative feedback the temperature starts to dwindle in the other figure we see that 
normal operation under pressurized condition maximum temperature reached is 1200 degree centigrade then we have depressurization where the maximum temperature reaches reaches 1600 degree centigrade this also sets the design goal for the maximum design basis scenario at 1600 degree centigrade now taking a look at all the different slides together we see that fission products are contained and particle failure is independent and is driven by the maximum temperature only there is passive cooling feature third the fuel particle is safe with zero probability of failure till about 1800 degree centigrade beyond design basis uh, consideration the negative feedback along with other favorable conditions keep the reactor temperature in check even in case of a loca or a lofa more on safety terrain we have understood so far that it's a different system altogether and hence fundamentally and and it is fundamentally more forgiving and and gentler Fail, fuel failure mechanism of coated particles are decoupled and totally independent which means one coated particle failure cannot lead to failure of neighboring coated particle as failure is a derivative of the maximum fuel temperature failure has no impact on the coolability of the fuel coated particle failure will release a minuscule quantity of fission product note based on the inherent safety features there is no cliff edge effect or large releases even in an extremely rare event beyond far beyond the design basis scenarios is this a new technology of course not we have seen several experimental and commercial operations since 1960s we have extensive operational experience the technology is mature and is ready for deployment for temperature up to 850 degrees centigrade we have well documented know hows on various aspects knowledge base is intact let's look at the r&d initiatives materials we require high temperature with standing with standing materials we also need to figure out more applications so as to benefit from the technology in hand international atomic energy agency has published various tech doc series some of them are mentioned uh, on the slide there is also a test facility at Oregon State University. IAEA with Research Center ULEC has made available HCP, that is HTR code package, to all member states under ONCORE, which is IAEA Open Source Nuclear Code for Research Analysis Initiative. IAEA is also open to various CRPs, that is collaborative research projects with various universities and research instit institutions across the globe. Before we, con we conclude, let's do a quick comparison of the standard conventional LWR with the HTGR. The moderator and coolant are graphite and helium. In case of LWR, uh, we have water. Average exit uh, temperature is 700 to 950 degrees centigrade. For an LWR, that is 310 degrees centigrade. Structural material is again graphite for an LWR, LWR that is steel. Fuel clad is silicon carbide and pyrolytic carbon for LWR that's zircaloy. Fuel, we can use either uranium dioxide or uranium oxycarbide. For LWR we use UO2. Now fuel damage at uh, a time at temperature so for uco is 150 hours at 1800 degree centigrade for lwr there is no timing time limit so it can happen as quick as in seconds and the temperature for fuel failure is 1260 degree centigrade power density is 4 to 6.5 watts per cubic centimeters in case of lwr as we had already seen this is 58 to 105 which is like 20 times higher migration length is about 57 centimeters because of the low density uh, of the HTGR fuel and for LWR that is 6 centimeters thank you if you have any other questions or comments you can email me at ankit.nuclear at gmail.com